So while mm -hmm. some Democrats are pushing for a tough action against the president, the Wall Street Journal editorial board argues Democrats actually face a political dilemma. Quote, Mr. Trump lied to the public about his dealings with Mr. Cohen. Bill Clinton lied to the public and under oath in a legal proceeding, yet Democrats defended him. So let's talk about it with our power panel, Democratic strategist Dave Brown, former Justice Department attorney Jim Trustee, and Fox News contributor Mark Thiessen. Welcome to all of you gentlemen. Good to be with you. Hey, Shannon. Okay, so let's follow up on that. I want to play something from Alan Dershowitz a little bit earlier today talking about this idea of a double standard. We need a single standard. If you wouldn't go after Bill Clinton, don't go after Donald Trump. If you're going after Donald Trump, then you have to go after Hillary Clinton for everything that she allegedly did. Jim, do you have to? Do you have to have a double standard, a single well, standard? Well, do you have, I mean, do you have to do one to do the other, or are these no. completely factually separate cases no, they're, and they're justified differently? They're separate, but I want to, what I think he's kind of touching on is the fact that even now after Comey came in and testified, there's still a very unsettled question about the approach, whether the prosecutors approached the Hillary probe the same as the Trump probe. And Comey basically sidestepped questions about immunity, about false statement prosecutions. That whole issue is completely unresolved. And I think apolitically, you really should be concerned as a citizen to have they politicized the process where there's kind of two sets of rules. So I think that's what Alan was getting at. And I think that's a very fair point. Well, to Jim Comey, we're going to talk more about him, but I want to play something he said this weekend as people, uh, you know, look at him and say, has he remained neutral or not throughout this process? They have questions about that. Here's what he said Sunday. All of us should use every breath we have to make sure that the lying stops on January 20th, 2021. Look, I understand any, uh, the Democrats have important debates to have about who, who their candidate should be. They have to win. Yeah. They have to win. Dave, you know that's going to just be fuel on the fire of those who say there is a deep state conspiracy. These people were working against President Trump. He managed to get elected despite that. So now they're going to try to take him down. I, I suppose that's that's a conclusion some would draw. I think it's the wrong conclusion. Uh, look, I, I am in a unique position of, of on, at least on this panel, perhaps feeling like I have to defend Jim Comey, even though I, I still am rather uh, angry with him for, for his conduct uh, in 2016 in the days leading up to the election. But I'll say this. He's a private citizen now. And if, if that's his sentiment, then I... I respect his ability as a, as a private citizen to, vo to vocalize that sentiment. I happen to agree with him that I think we need to do everything in our power to ensure the president is not reelected in 2020. Uh, so I'll leave it there, Shannon. Okay. In the meantime, there's this question about uh, what he's going to be facing with respect to not just the, the Russia investigation, because a lot of people think we didn't get any real answers about that last week, something definitive or the so-called smoking gun. Um, but this issue of Cohen and the payments to the women, that seems to be something that's going to be a little bit tougher um, for folks. Uh, in the Federalist, Gabriel Mallow writes this, in the sentencing memorandum for Cohen, federal prosecutors have provided a roadmap for Trump's indictment. Were he any other person, they certainly would have presented this information to a grand jury for indictment by now. Mark, agree or disagree? Well, so here's, the, here's where this becomes a problem for Democrats and why this whole Mueller probe could end up being a disaster for the Democrats, is that if, if, if this was supposed to be about Russia and, Ru and a criminal conspiracy with Russia to affect the 2016 election, if Mueller finds some evidence of that, then Trump will be impeached and probably convicted if there's evidence that he did that. If he doesn't, he's not going to be convicted. If, but what could possibly happen is that the Mueller probe could find, present no evidence of a criminal conspiracy with Russia, but there could be investigators, both in the Southern District and Mueller, could come up with some evidence that he had other violations unrelated to Russia, like campaign finance violations, mm -hmm. pay, porn star payoffs, uh, something to do with his business empire. That becomes a disaster for Democrats because their base will demand impeachment, and they will, and they will be pushed into it. It'll be very hard for them to resist that. That impeachment effort will fail because two-thirds of the Senate is not going to convict the president for porn star payoffs. And so what will happen is, the third thing, there will be a massive political backlash against them because they will see with Trump's voters, who knew about his relationships with women before the, before the election and voted for him anyway, are going to see this as a coup d'etat. They're mm -hmm. going to see this as an effort to, to invalidate their votes. And if you think 2016, they were the deplorables, there was a backlash, imagine what they'll be in 2020. So this is a very, very dangerous, slippery slope for the Democrats. Everybody's been focused on Donald Trump's peril, political mm -hmm. peril. This could be political peril for the Democrats. Okay, so if we're talking about campaign finance, Professor Turley had this in The Hill um, under the headline, Mueller findings threaten Trump but fall short of a case for impeachment. He says, campaign vi fi finance violations are rarely prosecuted as criminal matters, and the vast majority are resolved by fines. I mean, Jim, that's just a fact. 
Right, although a lot of the ones that are administrative that are fines involve PACs as opposed to individuals. But I think the general point he's making is completely valid, which is we have to go with evidence. And there's so much hysteria, so much emotionality, so much political you know, posturing that it's kind of hard to know what the actual evidence is. Non-disclosure agreements may be really ugly things, but they're not illegal. Mm -hmm. And so it may be embarrassing, but that doesn't make it a campaign finance violation. And again, I also think it's interesting to see if the Southern District of New York is toting mm -hmm. the same line that Mueller is. There does seem to be maybe a different approach there that could be troublesome for the president. Yeah. But you can't judge this case from a Michael Cohen plea agreement right. where he accepts certain statements of facts and then suddenly that's admissible evidence in some people's yeah. minds. We're a far cry from, you know, sizing up the president with a, a suit for jail. And so much uh, that we don't know. Okay, and speaking of not knowing, uh, 245 times, as Catherine Herridge mentioned there, uh, Jim Comey, uh, the former FBI director, was testifying um, and could not remember. And, and Dave, these are substantive things, like how this whole investigation got started, who was responsible for it, how they started. I mean, something that most of us assume the FBI director would know. Yeah, so Shannon, you're a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. Jim's a lawyer. I'm, I'm not sure if the other panelist is a lawyer. Uh, I actually went back and, and read uh, much of the transcript today uh, in preparation for, for this, uh, this panel. And what struck me about the, the, the number of instances uh, in which Comey did say he couldn't recall or didn't remember, it, often he was being read uh, excerpts from transcripts and, and excerpts from text messages, uh, documents he didn't have in front of him, uh, and asking for, for a, a verbatim uh, accounting of is, is, is that factually accurate. And so he was, I think, very cautious and very... Um, uh, very, very intentional with his mm -hmm. language, especially because he has, as you well know, uh, an obligation to, to testify truthfully uh, before Congress, something mm -hmm. that Michael Cohen did not do and is now uh, facing uh, real jail time as a result. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think it's fair to say he was incredibly careful with his words, but I, I, I empathize with him because in, in the 100 pages that I reviewed ahead of, of this panel, mm -hmm. uh, it, was a, it was an incredibly grueling and, and arduous, uh, frankly, uh, recitation of facts dating all the way back to t 2015. So I, I certainly mm -hmm. wouldn't feel comfortable with my memory without having documents in front of me as well. Final word, Mark. Um, simply, look, if, if the Democrats taught us that uh, UK, the president's private conduct is not something that you impeach him over. They, the, the, uh, Chuck Schumer said that uh, the Monica Lewinsky thing was a tawdry but unimpeachable affair. Um, and now all of a sudden, they're going to end up channeling their inner Ken Starr uh, to go after the president of the United States. I think they're going to be in very deep political trouble if they try to do that. All right, Mark, Jim, and Dave, thank you all very much. Mark, Thanks. our one non-lawyer, right? <laughs> non-lawyer, exactly. <laughs> but in a lot of people, that would make you, opinion, that would make you the favorite. Day. That would make you the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> the only non-lawyer here. All right, thank you all. Thank